Hi again, it's Leon Turner once again from Trend Controls and uh, this is yet another video on IQ Vision and how to get the best out of it really. So in this particular video I'm going to talk about some bulk edits, so how to make changes through vast numbers potentially of items within IQ Vision to try and make common changes which would otherwise be quite tedious um, such as adding tags to thousands of points, changing attributes uh, and hiding various actions that you may or may not want people to have access to through the graphics. Um, now to that end, I've got a very simple setup here as they always are when I do them. So a couple of controllers and a very simple graphic on every one of those controllers, a relativized graphic. As you can see, it tells me who's logged in, which controller I'm looking at quite helpfully and some very simple little bits of information from the controller. So, you know, a driver status, some um, uh, knob values I can tweak and various other things. You can see there's only really four inputs and a green and red square. It will be green in a minute, I promise, uh, which indicates the output of this particular driver here. And I've got a little set button so that I can adjust the value of that knob in the controller. And I'll show you how that works. There we go, so quite simple, just uh, sets a knob value in the controller. Now, by default, when you right click on these items on the screen, you'll get, you'll see you get some actions which you may or may not want to expose to people, including when you have a graphic, be that a boiler graphic or chiller, or in this case, a simple animated square. Now, it isn't always appropriate, for example, for a knob. I don't. I really don't want people to override it and so on and so forth. I just want them to be able to set the value. That's all I want them to do. And this is a sensor reading in from outside. Definitely not appropriate to have people overriding it or trying to set it or anything like that. That's a read-only type, read-only type piece. So to try and demonstrate this, I've set up two users. This one I'm in the workbench environment here in IQ Vision. I've set up admin, but I've also set up two more. I've got an engineer and an operator. Now, they are set up in the user management in the way I described in a previous video on user configuration. So the engineer is set up with pretty high level access really, and the operator pretty low level access. Now that includes hiding that set button from that operator. And again, that's mentioned in the previous video. So I'm looking at exactly the same graphic on both these controllers here. Oh, sorry, on this controller, the same controller, as you can see, and the button doesn't appear for uh, the operator, but does appear for the engineer. And it's the same one I mentioned earlier. On these, I could also perhaps use a right click to drive some of these. So for example, um, on number three, I think, I've left these all enabled on this particular controller. So if I right click on the knob there, I can use that to set the button or set the value. And that works in exactly the same way if I use the button here. Now for my other user, I don't want them to be able to do that. So like I said, I've hit the button and I don't really want them to be able to do anything on any of these. Now, I've already made some changes on some of these items so that this operator can't actually access any of these, these items. Now, I haven't done it on all of them. And I'll show you how we could have set that across the board to change that. So what I'll do now is go to my one of my components and open the slot sheet. So if we look here, you can actually see why these appear. So active, inactive, auto and set all have an operator flag on them here. Now, if I take that off, the operator won't be able to see them. So that would obviously be quite a time consuming process to do that on all of these pieces, on all of the uh, various modules in all of the various controllers one at a time, and I'd have to set them all each of these set auto inactive active and so on one at a time so the idea is i'm going to go ahead and do that on all of the modules all of these points to make sure that they're not accessible 
from the graphics. And as I said, ideally, I want to give the user a button so that's all they can really use to adjust it. I don't want them seeing any of these right click options at all anywhere. Including that one, incidentally. So what I'm going to do is go and use something called the program editor or the program service, I should say, and it's a batch editor within it. Now, I should point out there is no undo to the batch editor. So make sure you have a copy of your station. It's saved, you've backed it up, you've copied it somewhere, you've made sure it's all safe. Because as I say, if you mess this up, you have to go and reinstate the station. So use with some degree of caution. So what I want to do is go away and I'm going to look inside my trend driver for uh, Boolean points. And there's my list. There's only th three controllers with one digital output on each of them. And I'm also going to add numeric points like so. So that should be all of my sensors, drivers, uh, outputs, etc., etc., And everything seems to be on there. Now, if I don't want to operate on one of these points, what I need to do is delete it out of the list. And I can do that on multiples and so on. But simply highlighting something in the list does not select it for action. It just means it's selected ready for deletion if you want to. It doesn't delete it out of the station, just removes it from this list. But I do want to act on everything, so I'm gonna, gonna go back and add those search points back in the points I search for. So that should be everything, as I say. Now, I can add a tag to all these things quite simply, and sometimes this is the easiest way to add lots of tags. So I could add a tag, um, for example, place Horsham and save. And that has now added that tag to every one of those points. So that was a fairly simple operation to add a tag to lots of points. Now it does mean I can go through and repeat this process. So I could add all the digital points to one, certain ones from some controllers, some from others, add those tags and juggle with the list as I'd add them. And as I say, you, you know, you just need to be careful that what you see in the list, everything will get added. But now all of those tags should have that place slash Horsham. I think I'll just check if I can remember how I spelled it. There you go. So 14 results have turned returned from the place Horsham tag. So that's already a success. So the next part is I'm going to edit a slot. So one of those, what I'm going to do is edit the slot flags. So these slots are anything that is associated with a point. Now, as I showed you earlier, you know, some one of those attributes is whether the thing is hidden, uh, marked for an operator usage and so on. So if I go and I find, for example, we'll do these in some sort of order if we can. We'll do override. Now, I want it to be hidden and that's the choices, but I want it to be hidden. Set flag to hidden for the override. OK, done. If I do another one, uh, auto, I want to be hidden. Now, obviously, I could leave that if I wished. Um, I want set to also be hidden. And we'll go with that for now. Now, if I go back to my graphics and refresh these both of these screens, what we should see now is the right click options have been reduced significantly. So I obviously missed a driver, but so we don't have right click options on. So this one has been limited by the fact it's an operator anyway, so I can't see it. This one still has active and inactive as an override. So again, I can just flip that on if I wish for a minute. It timed out previously. So what I need to do is go and find my active and hide that and then inactive and hide that one too so now when we go back to our sheets there is nothing 
you know, hopefully, I mean, you might be able to hear me, but I am right clicking on those points now and there is nothing there for me to interact with. So that effectively makes the graphic uh, read only unless I want to add a set button and that's obviously still works. Now, just to highlight how I've done that in the role service, I'll show you that very quickly. So in my role service, I've got an operator and engineer. You can see the operator only has an R, little r, which is read only. I highlight that. So these are the operator rights, read only. And the engineer has the full works, the full warranty, read, write, and interact. So had I chose to, I could have used this process to set the operator flag on those points. Okay, so what else can we do with the program manager? Now I'm going to clear all those out of the way. So now I'm going to try and increase the number of plots or samples in a plotting channel. And to do that, I'm going to go and find my plotting setup within the trend system. So the plot imports, the history imports. And now, so what I want to do is increase that there the record count, the number of records in any one channel. It's already quite a generous 100,000 by default. So for 15 minutes, that's an awful long time. But um, I'm going to increase it, put an extra naught on there or some such or something that's visible anyway. So find out what I need to go and get. I'm going to look at the slot sheet for my history importer and find out what the config. There we go. So it's this is the piece I need to pick up. So it's a Baja component and it is called config overrides or one word. And I've got to work out the capitals in a bit. So if I go back to my editor and find objects. So I'm going to look inside the driver. Uh, that one. And it is a custom thing. It's a Baja component. I'm going to use this little PQL builder type thing here to, to search for these. And the name was oops, config overrides, I believe. Oh, only spelt correctly. Ah, good. So I've got all of my history import config overrides slots up here. And if I go to edit slot, I can probably tell whether I've got the right one or not. So these are the things I know just so happen to be um, associated with that slot. So the capacity, I could I could even, you know, put some sort of change the, the, the names to, to something calculated, but I'm not gonna do that at all. I'm gonna leave that. So if I change this to something easily noticeable, so, completely random nonsense number, but we'll do that anyway. It tells me it's changed them all. And if I go back to my sensor and check, it's changed the record count to a different number. And again, I could change pretty much any of these things, but um, I'm not going to, it would seem a bit pointless. So that's just another example of something you can change using the, the program editor. So I hope that has been helpful um, and useful in at least some small way. As always, if you've got any questions, ask your, talk to your trend representative. Um, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.